What's up everyone, Dablade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, I'll be bringing you another endgame build, but this time for the hammer. Now what is an endgame build? Well, it's a build that is constructed from some of the rarest armor, weaponry, and decorations in the game. They also feature Krios crafting, but it's not to the extent where the armor augmentations feature only rare upgrades. Now as always, if you find these videos helpful, informative, or even entertaining, please consider leaving a like on the video, as well as subscribing to the channel, as it does help and allows me to bring you more build videos for a variety of different playstyles. Now when it comes to the hammer in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, the way it works could be divided into two categories. You have the Courage playstyle and the Strength playstyle. Strength benefits a playstyle that favours slower but more harder hitting individual attacks, whilst Courage allows for quicker but not as harder hitting attacks. That being said though, the Courage playstyle allows the hammer to make use of elements and ailments far more effectively than the Strength style. And so with that, I present to you the Berserk Elemental Hammer build. This is a build focused around the Strife and Berserk combo, which traditionally is found on more stamina heavy weapons, but it still works really well for the hammer when you're using the Courage playstyle. On top of that, this build, I will say, is for those of you who have yet to get to Title Update 5. Those of you who do have access to Title Update 5 may be able to find a stronger elemental build, but regardless, this build is still strong enough in Title Update 5 to take down monsters normally within 10 minutes or quicker. So for this build you'll need the full Chaotic Gore Megala set which includes the Chaotic Helm, Chaotic Mail, Chaotic Van Braces, Chaotic Fouds and the Chaotic Greaves. Remember this is the male version of the Chaotic Gore Megala armor. If you're female it will be the Nephilim set which are exactly the same in terms of stats. It's just a slightly different name and slightly different appearance. As for the Petalace, I'd recommend either the Demon Petalace or Absolute Petalace. Absolute Petalace if you want some extra health, Demon Petalace if you want damage. As for your talisman, you want to go for a talisman that has as much attack boost on it as possible. I'm using a slightly rarer talisman here that has attack boost at level 3 and a point in critical boost. It also has two tier 3 decoration slots on it. As for your hammer, this is an interchangeable elemental hammer build, so you can switch your weapon to take on different monsters depending on what they're weak to. So, for the purpose and demonstration of this video, I'll be showing off a fire build, and so I'd recommend using the volcanic impact, which is the magma almadron hammer. If you wanted to use the water element, I'd recommend the normal Almadron tree, the Doomsday Hammer. If you wanted to use ice, I'd recommend the Aurora Somnicanth tree, the Flicker Blizzard Blow. For thunder, I'd recommend the Skyfold Furry Flash, which is the Nawa Hammer. And then finally for dragon, normally I'd recommend Valstrax weapons, but for the hammer, I'd recommend Dark Morte, which is a Death Stench Hammer. As for the curious crafting on the weapon, I personally like to go for a decoration slot upgrade if your weapon doesn't have a tier 3 rampage decoration slot and then increase the weapon's elemental value. Now when it comes to the decorations you've got a fair few to use so first of all I've gone for tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit. For the rampage slot go for either the elemental bane if you're going up against monsters that have hit points that are severely weak to the elements. If not go for one of the anti-species decorations or the Deora soul decoration. I've then gone for fervor jewels to max out resentment, attack jewels to increase the attack boost skill, Blaze Jewels to max out fire attack. Remember, if you're using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace these Blaze Jewels to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for Charge Jewels to max out Charge Master, Expert Jewel to max out Critical Eye. This Expert Jewel here you may not have depending on what version of the game you are using, but you should still be able to produce similar results either through Curious Crafting or slightly changing the decorations you have. I've then gone for a Spirit Bird Core Jewel for a point in the Spirit Bird Core skill, a Critical Core Element Jewel for a point in Critical Element, and then finally some Chain Jewels to max out the Burst skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build that has fluctuating stats. By default, you have a raw attack of 449 with a fire rating of 234. You have 50% base affinity, which can be 65% when we take into account weakness exploit, and you'll have a defense of 869 that is strong against water and ice but weak to the other elements. However, should we apply our various buffs, we could potentially have a raw attack of 442, a fire rating of 250, a affinity rating of 85, which can easily be 100% when we take into account weakness exploit, and a defense of 919, but unfortunately becomes weak to every element except for ice. But that shouldn't matter too much, as we have the Berserk skill. Now, when it comes to the switch skills, to be honest, you can go with whatever you want, but this build relies on the Charge Switch Courage switch skill. I'd also recommend the Impact Burst Silkbind Attack 2 to help increase our damage. I also personally like the Keeping Sway Silkbind move as well, as it's great for repositioning and avoiding attacks. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you'll have Critical Eye at level 7 or level 6. 
Critical Eye is a skill that increases the base affinity of a build. You'll then have Resentment at level 5, which is a skill that whenever we have red health on our health bar, we'll gain increased raw attack. And this should be all the time with this build as we are using the Berserk skill. You'll then have Fire Attack at level 5, which increases the fire rating and thus the fire damage of this build. Remember, if you're using a different weapon with a different element, fire attack will be replaced with whatever new element you are using. So say you're using an ice weapon, it will have ice attack at level 5 instead. You'll then have attack boost at level 4, which is a skill that increases the raw attack of a build, and at level 4 or above, grants us a percentage bonus to our raw attack as well. You'll then have critical boost at level 3, a skill that increases the damage of our attacks whenever they crit a monster, but only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental or element portion. You'll then have Coalescence at level 3, which is a skill that temporarily boosts our hunter's stats after recovering from blights and abnormal statuses. And this works well in unison with Bloodlust, as when we fight off the effects of Bloodlust, Coalescence easily kicks in, increasing our raw attack and elemental attack. You'll then have Bloodlust, which is a modified version of the Frenzy Virus, a small purple bar that fills up above your health bar. This also, unfortunately, drains your health slowly. But Bloodlust, whilst it is in effect, will increase your raw attack, evasion capabilities and reduce your stamina usage. Now there's two ways to control this Frenzy Virus. You can either take a Null Berry to reduce it slightly, or should you deal enough damage to a monster, then you'll fight off the effects, to which afterwards you'll recover any of the lost health that Bloodlust drained and gain a sizable boost to your base affinity. Next up is Charge Master at level 3, which is a skill that when charged attacks hit a monster, the elemental and status buildup of that attack is increased. This applies to the Hammer's Courage charged attacks as well. You'll then have Burst at level 3, a skill that when we're continuously landing hits on a monster, it will gradually build up our raw attack and elemental attack, allowing us to deal more damage. You'll then have Strife, which is one of the essential skills for this build, to which this increases our elemental attack and affinity in proportion to the length of red health on our health gauge. On top of that, when we're at 60% or over, we'll also gain infinite stamina, but that's a bonus side effect for the hammer in all honesty. Now, Strife pairs with the Berserk skill, which is the next skill. Berserk at level 2 is a skill that whenever we swap to a blue scroll, all our vitality will change to red. Now, why would you want to do this, apart from obviously triggering buffs from other skills like Strife and Resentment? Well, when we're using a blue scroll and we have the red health, we cannot faint from a monster's attack. In fact, we take pretty much no damage from a monster's attack whatsoever. Instead though, Berserk will drain our health over time slowly, continuously so long as we remain on the blue scroll. This health drain though will be increased and ticked down much faster should we take hits from a monster. So it's best that after you've taken a few hits from a monster to change back to the red scroll to reset that health drain, maybe heal up before going back to your blue scroll. If you want more information and more in-depth details about Berserk and Strife, there is a video elsewhere on the channel. Anyway, next up you'll have Weakness Exploit at level one, which is a skill that increases our affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. I've mainly taken this to ensure we get 100% crit with this build once Coalescence is in effect. You'll then have Critical Element at level 1, increasing the elemental damage of our attacks whenever they crit a monster. You'll then have Evade Extender at level 1, a optional skill that allows us to dodge at extended distances. You'll then have Mail of Hellfire, which is a risky skill, but it's kind of countered by Berserk, thankfully. Basically, Mail of Hellfire turns your hunter into a bit of a glass cannon, as when you're using the red scroll, your raw attack is increased, but your defense goes down, and when you're using the blue scroll, your elemental attack goes up, but your resistances go down. But like I said, Berserk pretty much counters this. You'll then have Spirit Recall at level 1, which is a skill that allows random spirit birds to come to our hunter at fixed intervals, minimizing the need for our hunter to go out of the way to actually find spirit birds. However, this doesn't work in arena quests. You'll then have Element Exploit at level 1, which is a skill that increases the elemental damage of our attacks when they hit body parts of a monster that are extremely weak to elements. If a body part has a weakness element of 20 or above, Element Exploit will kick in. And then finally, you may have Intrepid Heart on your build. I don't think everyone will have this on their build, but Intrepid Heart is a nice defensive skill that gives us another additional blue bar above our health bar, which gradually fills up as we continuously attack a monster. Once full, Intrepid Heart will kick in, to which, should we take a hit from a monster that would knock our hunter back, the damage reaction is ignored by our hunter and the actual damage taken is reduced. But like I said, not all of you may have this skill. But those are all the essential skills to this build. Let's move on to the next section where we talk about the Curious Crafting. Now like I've said in multiple videos, I try not to go for the absolute rarest Curious Crafting. 
Not only does it drive me a little bit insane trying to go for all the rarest skills, but it could be potentially considered unrealistic to go for them all the time. But regardless, for the Chaotic Helm, I've got a point in the Burst skill, a Tier 1 Decoration slot and a reduction in the Critical Eye skill. For the Chaotic Mail, I've got a Tier 4 Decoration slot upgrade and a Tier 1 Decoration slot. For the Chaotic Vambraces, I've got a point in Bloodless, a reduction in Resentment and then another Tier 1 Decoration slot. For the Chaotic Fouds, I've got a Tier 4 Decoration slot upgrade, a point in Mel of Hellfire and another reduction in Resentment. And then finally for the Chaotic Greaves, I've got a point in Intrepid Heart and a Vade Extender. This point in Intrepid Heart here may not be obtainable to all Hunters out there depending on what title update they have. But every build out there comes with various pros and cons, even these endgame builds. They may be strong, powerful, but they could come with a downside of a health drain or potentially they are very difficult to craft. When it comes to this Berserk Elemental Hammer build, its biggest pro is its elemental damage output. Using the Courage playstyle, you're able to deliver a lot of elemental damage to monsters and is a fun playstyle overall. The next big pro is the Strife Berserk combo, which not only gives us a massive boost to our damage, but allows us a unique survivability tool, which is great so long as you can manage your health bar and switch in between the two scrolls. And finally for the pros is that this build is an interchangeable elemental build, meaning that you can pretty much change out the weapon to whatever element you need with minimal changes to the build overall. But of course there are cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is managing the build's health drain, not only with Berserk, but also their health drain from Bloodlust. And the other con for this build is potentially there can be the odd sharpness issue, but it's not too bad. But there we have it, that is the Berserk Elemental Hammer build. Like I said, it is a build that is designed primarily to deal elemental damage to a monster and utilise the Courage playstyle. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you like to use the slower but harder hitting attacks, in which case I would recommend a raw attack build. But that being said, if you enjoy using elements in the game, you like the Courage playstyle, then this build is very satisfying with the hammer and can bring down pretty much any monster you come across in the game so long as you're countering them with the correct element. But what are your thoughts? Please leave a comment down below. And until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you another endgame build, this time for the hammer in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.